Hi, this is Richard from Animate.com and in this fifth video on Blender's Shader Node Editor and Texture Coordinates, we are trying to produce parallax occlusion mapping. This is a technique to fake depth into a 3D surface. We will heavily use vector math and math nodes in order to do so and I will try to explain each step what is going on geometrically as we produce the node setup for the parallax mapping. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First of all, we need a texture on our shaded default cube. So we add a texture image texture node. Choose your image file and connect the image texture to the base color of the shader. And to distort its coordinates, we have to define these explicitly by adding an input UV map node. To distort the UV map, we will use a mix RGB node, as we did in the previous video. Set its blend mode to add, so that we don't redefine coordinates, but rather offset them. Even a solid color already shifts the texture along the surface. What we want is to calculate the direction along the surface that's pointing towards the camera. We get them by adding an input tangent node. This will give us the u-axis in global coordinates. But we also need the v-component of our map on the mesh surface. This one is called the bitangent. Since the bitangent is normal to both, to the tangent and to the surface normal, we calculate it from the cross product of these two. Let's add an input geometry node and use their normal and incoming vectors. The geometry node outputs these vectors in global space, just like our tangent. We need to assure to calculate all vector products in the same coordinate space. In our case, we use all vectors in global space. Let's add a vector math node and set its type to cross product. The cross product is perfect for two vectors to produce a third vector that has a 90 degree angle to both. We use it once between the incoming vector and normal. The resulting vector points sideways to our viewing axis and sits on the mesh surface. If we make a second cross product of this vector with the surface normal, we get a vector that still sits on the mesh surface but this one is pointing right towards the camera. We now have the direction into which we can fake depth, since it visually is the same direction as the normal, which is pointing outwards from the surface, but our fake depth vector is pointing along the surface, which is the domain of our UV map. So it's perfect to distort the UV map in that direction, giving the impression of depth. But we need to split that direction into the u-axis along the tangent vector and the v-axis along the bitangent vector. We get the bitangent by making the cross product between the normal and the tangent vector. Be sure to have the normal as first input and below a second vector input the tangent vector. So we can project our fake depth direction onto either the tangent direction and onto the bitangent direction to get their component. That's what the vector dot product is for. It generates a single number out of two vectors. We can say it tells how long one vector points along a direction of another vector. We call these numbers components and they are the factors to split our wanted full depth into a U distortion and the V distortion. Let's shift D duplicate one of the vector math nodes and set its type to dot product. We need three of these. The first one gets connected to the tangent and our depth direction, the second cross product. That's our depth's U component. And the second dot product is between the bitangent and the depth direction to give us the depth's v component. We can finally combine these two values in a converter combine xyz node. These are the two components of our fake depth direction. One last thing before we do the distortion on our UV map. If we look along a surface, we would need very much distortion. 
SIN's perspective, makes the surface very thin towards us. We can address that dividing the distortion by the third dot product using the normal and incoming vectors. Shift D duplicate the vector math node and set its type to divide. Connect the combined distortion vector and the third dot product to compensate that visual factor. You can connect the output of this division into the second channel of our MixRGB node instead of the tangent vector. We see how changing the mix factor offsets the texture as if it would rise along the normal for any point of view. That's great, so finally we just need to amplify this depth by means of a displacement map. Before we do so, let's clean up our node setup and group the nodes for this fake depth distortion vector into one node group. We select all of these nodes and press Ctrl G to group them. Inside the node group, we can still connect the mix factor to the group input node, so that this value can be plugged into this node group. Press Ctrl Tab to exit the node group and see a tidy node setup of 5 nodes. Like in the previous video, we want to distort our texture with help of another displacement texture. This brick wall texture from TextureHaven.com comes with a displacement map. So let's use it, adding in Texture, Image Texture and select the displacement map. Connect the UV map as vector input for this image and connect the color output to the node group's factor. This looks too distorted, so we need to decrease the factor. Add a converter math node and set it to multiply. Connect it to the factor and set the second value to 0.02. The displacement map needs to be inverted, so let's Shift D duplicate the math node and set its type to subtract. First value is 1 and the second is the color from the image. This is one clean step of distortion. If we want more depth, we should go step by step, rather than increasing the size of one distorting step. Let's duplicate these four nodes then, and let the UV map get distorted more and more with each step procedurally. I make three duplicates to get the displacement I want for this texture. Add a input value node and multiply its value by 0.02 so that we can connect one value node to each step. To see the effect we can compare it with a default setup that just uses the undistorted UV map for both the diffuse and the normal map. In comparison it looks very flat. The possibility to distort the map according to the point of view enables for much more detail without sacrificing memory and processing. We clearly see the deepening of the gaps of mortar between the bricks. Using this shading technique helps to save so much time on modeling out the details in the texture. As a homework for you, I let you think about how to ensure the deeper areas are covered by higher ones. Little tip, this can be achieved by comparing the lightness of the displacement texture before and after distortion. I have a parallax occlusion mapping pack on Blender Market with different materials for several specific uses like grass and fur shading, crowds, or a more sophisticated setup known as Deep Parallax Occlusion Mapping. That's a more precise way to determine the visible depth at a surface point and it has some parameters like a vector offset to shift the depth direction. Ambient occlusion and bump strength all cleaned up in a tidy small shader group. So check it out and as you're there be sure to check out my other products. There's surely something there for you. Like, subscribe and hit the bell for notification as this will help to produce more videos like this. In the next video I want to elaborate on this approach to use the point of view to distort the mapping coordinates. I made the heat engine and the deep tree libraries with this approach. Projection mapping, fake depth and volumetric shading by projecting it onto the surface of the mesh rather than inside the volume.
but more about that in the next video. So much about Blender's Shader Node Editor and Texture Coordinates. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and happy blending. Bye.